So what we're looking at here is one of our L-series mounts. And you can think of this as being divided into three sections. Two of them are evident. You have the drive base, which in this configuration moves you an azimuth. Then you have the fork arm, which in a lot of ways is not doing anything more than ensuring that we have enough separation between the drive base and our second motor. And these are spaced out enough so that our telescope can swing through without having a collision with the lower section of the fork arm or the drive base. So for the most part, our telescopes are meant to take photographs of fairly small objects in the sky. Things that, you know, if you're holding out your thumb, might be about the size of your thumbnail. And using smaller sensors, you'd magnify more. This hole that I'm reaching my hand into right now is the motor's pivot axis. And the motor just barely fits underneath this cover. You know, we actually have one of our motors, or at least the magnet plate for one of our motors sitting over here on the desk. These are all neodymium magnets, each one of which has about 80 pounds of pulling force. That gives you an idea of how strong the magnetic field created by this system is. As space is commercialized, as more and more of these little six by six inch or 10 by 10 inch CubeSats are going up into orbit, it's going to become increasingly critical for us to know not only where all of them are, but where all of the little bits of junk that might destroy them are. When satellites collide, or when satellites are destroyed by shrapnel, that creates a lot more shrapnel and just makes the job harder. And so, you know, Right now, it's not yet a high demand market. Wait 10 years. It, you know, when the number of satellites that are working in LEO goes from one or 2,000 to 10 or 20,000, this is going to start becoming a really critical issue.